Next. Yeah. Johnny um, Bowling wants to know, I hope I'm saying his name right. Well, I've always read it Boiling, but it's not as Bowling. B-O-L-I-N-G. Johnny. I just call him Johnny. He had a heart ventricle transplant or a stent put in his ventricle um, the other day. So he wants to know. Um, he lives in Georgia. He was at Piedmont Hospital. Yep, just up the street. Yeah, I don't know if he's home yet. He's not answering me because he doesn't want to bait the question, he says. I said, okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, so um, he was an 18-wheeler truck driver. So I asked him, could you drive a truck again? And he said, that's what I, what I was thinking about, but I don't want to bait the answer. So um, he... Oh God, he can totally drive a truck again. Okay. Um, Hand down. Okay. Um, I'm guessing he's about 53 years old, is my guess. But I read the other day where he was saying, I'm losing my hair, I'm losing his, my teeth, I don't hear as well, my heart skips a beat. He was writing, and I was like, man, you're on pain medication, dude. Like when he had his, <laughs> like he wrote it on the Facebook, you know? And I was like, don't be depressed, you know? Like, is he this, you know, you see your life flash before you when someone tells you you need a stint in your heart. I'm sure that's very scary to go under the knife or whatever they went in through is growing, I think. But just to be told that you need that is scary, you know? But he survived it. it. Went really well. Okay. The surgery. Okay. So um, there's no need to baby yourself like okay. you think you'd want to because that was a major procedure. But your body accepted it. Your body's happier and it's going to be stronger. Right. The, um, the hair and the teeth, we're looking at minerals and stress. Okay. So uh, look at um, how you keep your schedule, like executive um, skills, executive skills. Where are you allowing your free time? Are you doing downtime? And you haven't done anything for yourself, like no investment in your own health. So that hopefully will come from this procedure where you will say, I can drive X amount of hours before I have to do this for myself. X amount of hours than myself, back and forth. Um, but I, I see you having a happier life. You're joking more. He's They're showing funny. me he's an instigator. He's someone that pokes, 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 and then watches to see what happens and then cracks up over it. You know, and people are like, what the, you know, come you on, him. man. You got him, Jamie. And then he just, he's all happy about it though. He's not doing it to like tear people down. He does it cause it's, come on, man, like live in the mood. It's all right. right. Right, right. It brings so joy. Yeah. You're going to embody that kind of joy after this. Give yourself about one, two, three. That's really fast. Four days from today. Today is the 15th. Something it's like around that. Around the 19th of this month. Mm. <sighs> the ease of your breath, um, the little pains and stuff. And you don't need all the pain meds. Like, go ahead and start weaning off of it. Your okay. body really needed it. It hurt more before than it will after the surgery. <laughs> right, exactly. Your leg is sore, but that's going to be fine. There's nothing there. Okay, so, okay, I got to ask this lady because she's, she, I know she's friends with you, Jamie. So help me out on her name, please. Please help me. J-O-S-E Plankin. Josie. Josie. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, can someone be a good healer even if they haven't? have not she skipped a word been like able been to healed. heal themselves completely oh god can you still be a good healer if you haven't healed yourself completely yeah yes um often yeah griffin saying back it up start over griffin <laughs> griffin saying that when we're using our body as an instrument to channel information, energy, healing over to someone, we don't have to consciously be aware of what vibration it is, how it looks, how it needs to land, how the healing happens. So we can channel that what's above our awareness to someone else that they can use. Griffin said, now, if you haven't been able to heal yourself, <laughs> he goes that's very interesting 
because he says sometimes not being able to heal is the 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 boundary or the cap that you allowed in your life so that you have the tension and the struggle so that you can achieve something that you are not consciously aware of right now other times that not being able to heal yourself is your ultimate excuse for you to stay who you are so if you don't want to be better but you don't want to say that because that's not kind you know because to be better that you might have to do some exercise or surgery or something that you're not really interested in Griffin goes which is totally fine like screw everybody else them telling you that oh you know you're not good enough you're not doing this properly or right be whoever you want to be but identify what it is because once you do that then most of the time that boundary then just becomes part of who you are and it doesn't have to have those tweaks to it and you can navigate around it and incorporate it and then it's no longer an issue and then you can heal yourself and probably he says um mo most extreme way that you wouldn't be able to even conceive did that make sense conceive to understand okay griff uh She's got more questions, but I'm going to add to that question because I, I love what you guys are saying, um, what you're saying. So they say, there's a saying that says when you talk to someone else, you're kind of talking to yourself and that wisdom comes from pain and meaning that you've lived it um, as a short definition. So when you go to heal someone else, aren't you healing a part of yourself anyways? Yes. Like it'd be impossible not to? Correct. It would be impossible not to. Okay. All right. Okay. So why do we have a team of guides? This is her again. Why do we have a team of guides, um, ETs and angels when potentially we can connect to our higher self? How best to connect to either if, when our clairs aren't so well developed? <laughs> okay. Griffin goes, I understand it, but I just can't yeah. read. He goes, how many fucking times do you actually listen to yourself, right? You're in the car and you're like, oh, I need to go this way. But you're like, no, 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 that's the direction to go. And you don't listen and then, bam, something happens. Because you're not listening to you. He goes, so what makes you think that just because you can access your higher self that you're going to go do that and listen to it? Absolutely. I was just talking to someone about this that they were telling me that my higher self was laughing at me. And I said, tell her to fuck off. I don't like her right now. <laughs> he's laughing with you he says it makes sense though like Send you've been taught else. and trained yeah. yeah you've been taught and trained that an expert lies outside of you and you seek information outside of you and that's how you collect it through a book through a teacher through a guru through a friend through whatever an experience those are all what you call external experiences which is total bullshit but that's what we're labeling it right now because that's how you understand what we're talking about. So if guide, you know, ETs, angels can come in and talk to you, all of a sudden you're observing them as an external voice. And that's something you're comfortable with because they can assess you, talk to you and give you the information that you're asking for and go, okay, well, they told me. And now I can look at that information and say, do I want to accept it? And there's less risk to it because if I accept it and I do it and it doesn't work the way that I want it to, how do you do that? It doesn't, I, he's doing his head. Right. It he doesn't can, work dance. the way that I want it to, then I can blame you for it. Well, that's what they said. And it didn't work. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're trying to displace your responsibility. He goes, which is very fucking unhealthy. Right. Like Josie, I'll add in with Jamie and Jamie if you want, and Griff if you want to add something. <laughs> Conk, why are you here? Well, this is one of my guides, Josie. <laughs> We're going to teach you, I've been working with you on how to communicate without running people over. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like to communicate when Eric, my ex, did his suicide for me to tell my story and not get so frustrated that people are like doubting my story, like believe in yourself, be grounded, be kind, and don't get so, you know, like I can have a strong communication when you get frustrated, like, and run people over. So it just turns, it makes people turn to death there and you end up being rude and have to go clean up your mess. And you're just really trying to believe in yourself and 
affirm the story that you lived. So he was working with me on my communication to not run people over with my communication. Don't be a bulldozer. You know what I mean? Like just talk, you'll be heard, you know, be confident, breathe, you know, those kind of things. But when I first heard him, I laughed. I was like, do I really run that many people over? You know, like, but I mean, um, my dad's really strong with words too. Very, very strong with words. Like, and I don't know if getting beat or words hurt worse, but I know that words can't be taken back. You know? Yeah, that's the shitty point about words, Griffin said, is you hold on to them in the back of your head and sometimes in your heart, and then you make them part of your truth. Right. And it changes who you are. Absolutely. I'd rather get punched in the face just once. Me too. You know, rather it, than told something. Oh my God. I have to manage that. Amen. Really? Amen. That's just me for a personal decision because if you've ever had verbal abuse in your life or anything, um, oh. it just, it just replays, it just replays in your head like a broken record. Yeah. Mm. And you'll ask that thought to excuse itself. Thanks for visiting, <laughs> but you'd like it to leave and it takes forever to clear your mind of that. It's a discipline like a yoga or anything. It's a discipline like in with the good out with the bad in your breath you know, and, um, yeah. So, okay. So then she asked, can they recommend how to rediscover who we really are? Um, who we were born to be before the programming began to find our joy and passion again and techniques to reset. Okay. Yes. Um, Griffin says the first one, he says, I say to you who are listening, Go challenge yourself by doing something different, safe, but risky at the same, you know, time, but safe. Because when you challenge yourself in this way, and he goes, I'm not talking about just one thing. I'm talking about something that's more than 21 days long. You know, something that you could take a chunk of and look at it and say, that's not normally what I would do. Like, I'm not a fan of the ocean, but I'm going to take a scuba lesson. You know, and it, it pushes you somehow. He goes, if you are not looking at yourself through the, Griff says, I'm going to call them fears, the, the unwanted, then you're never going to see who you are because you're always looking at what's comfortable, you know, the routine, the schedule. And if you don't shake it up, if you shake the eight ball, you're not going to get all the sides that come to the surface, you know, to have a very fulfilling life. So he says, I do suggest that. So if you feel stuck in your shoes right now, nothing has progressed, nothing has happened, find something that pushes you. It could be a macrame class. It could be a painting class, scuba, yoga. Right. <laughs> yoga, a trip to Antarctica. That's another one. It's good. Um, uh, travel, anything like that. Now that will loosen you up and that will allow you to see different sides of yourself. Now it gives you the freedom to do some regression therapy, whether that's going to be through guided meditation, through a hypnotherapist, through a deprivation. Um, so, uh, what? Do it again. Sensory deprivation. Like a deprivation so, tank or something? Deprivation tank, psychomantium, something that challenges how your senses are working. Mm -hmm. And he says, and none of that is available to you. And you're like, oh, that's too expensive and I can't do it. He goes, if I can put some cotton in your ears and blindfold yourself and then have somebody drop you off at a restaurant and go try to eat a dinner. Right. He goes, try to eat it being deaf and blind. You can talk. That's fine. But... um. Try to figure out how you would get that food, how you order it, how you would pay for it. How, did you get robbed? You know, they right. said, oh, yeah, that's a $10 bill, but it's not. It was $100, you know. So where's your trust levels with it? So you exercise how your senses are discovering your environment. When we challenge them that way, it stimulates the brain to tear apart some of the neural pathways that are keeping life safe for you. And it unlocks memories and connections to other lifetimes. And so when that starts to happen, there's gonna be familiar areas in very new experiences. And you're gonna say, well, this is the first time I've ever done this, but it feels like I've done it a thousand times. Because mm -hmm. that's when we start latching on to who we were, where we came from, and what we're carrying through. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Find a therapist that will help you work that out, talk it out. Okay. See, that's my diagnosis, Jose. Yeah, and it's funny because that's actually this other girl's question too, that she feels hazy and how do you get back on track? And I feel like you answered that. So I'm not gonna ask that question because it seems like a repetitive question. 